uh, do you ever notice when you see a married couple that are actually smiling or looking interested in each other? Yes. Everybody says, ha ha, it's an act. <laughs> when, they home, when they go home, they probably kill each other. That's what everybody says because finding a married couple that actually looks happy is so rare that everybody can't stop talking about it. Now, if it was such a hit, they would expect it. They would expect it. Obviously, it stinks if it's such a novelty. Dr. Jackie, I want you to get married. I want to dance at your wedding. Because you and want I me to be nauseous you. for the rest of my life. <laughs> Thank you very much for I being here. I wish you were God Thank bless you. You're a wonderful person, and I really happen to have the greatest respect for you. I would like to follow you home one day just to see what you're doing. <laughs> Friends think you're really funny in bed. You're so funny <laughs> to so many people. I don't know if they think I'm funny in bed. I don't try for laughs at a time like that. <laughs> and if I caught them laughing, I don't know if I would enjoy the whole experience that much. But uh, I never find, uh, I think any man who tries to be funny in bed is uh, with the wrong person. You shouldn't be with a girl if you're trying to be funny. You should do uh, at least wait till you come to the stage and face an audience because a girl is not looking for jokes and you're not looking for laughs. And uh, people who talk at a time like that, even who talk, who, who make unnecessary noises like the people you were interviewing before, <laughs> I, find, I find the distraction that uh, there's something wrong with a person who tries to please you so much that they have to tell jokes while they're doing it. <laughs> because obviously he doesn't think he's doing it so well if he thinks the joke will make the difference. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Larry. We are running out of time. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you for being here. Yes, come in. Ah, oh, Doc. Oh, I'm afraid the time's come for farewells, Ridgey. Yes, I'm afraid it has, Doc. <laughs> The man alongside me is uh, very exciting and uh, enchanting and charming. And there's only one of him in the whole world. Uh, of course, I think one, one, Jackie, one well, Jackie Mason is enough, right? <laughs> Jackie. It's almost as bad as one Joe Franklin. You've got to do it the best you can with it. <laughs> got to make the best of it, right? Right. Jackie, I was talk before we talk about what's on the agenda and what's current, I was talking with the young lady who stars in... Uh, singing in the rain, how soon they forget I had a thing, right? But, but, she was but, here a minute ago, <laughs> you forgot what she does for a living, right? <laughs> when you start in a Broadway show... Do you still remember that this is your show? You've got to keep everything in mind here. Right, right. I saw you in a show... Right. ...a few years ago. That's news itself. The theater was jammed. Right. And then the critics came... And lost it up, and I always give up, and the whole show was over. But is that a good theory, that maybe shows should only run in preview and not even get reviewed by the critics? I think the worst thing that ever happened to this country was critics. <laughs> Just because the show is not so hot, it's none of their business. And who needs them to loss up my show so that everybody should find out how I stink? They got a lot of nerve, and they should be put out of show business immediately. Because bad shows should have a right to exist for people who don't know the difference. And thank God there's a lot of people like that who could keep shows alive. And I could have been a sensation for the ignorant people of this country. Who needs intelligence? Intelligence is what wipes out America. That's right. You show me anything intelligent, Shakespeare. Can't make a living. But if you put two people together who don't know what they're talking about, everybody shows up to find out how they got the job. And they make a fortune. And I tell you the truth, we need somebody to crusade for things that stink. And I want to tell you something. That's why I came on this show. Uh -huh. Now, <laughs> you happen to be exactly the opposite. You don't know what you do for a living, and you still make a living. This is what I like. This is what I like. A person who at 2 o'clock in the morning talks to anybody. Most people are sleeping, so they don't know the difference. You'd walk out for thinking it was a hit. Nobody saw it. They were sleeping. You make a living the next day. They can't say it was bad. They didn't see it. So the show continues. And as long as you could keep talking in the middle of the night, you could live forever. Listen to this. I want to tell the I'm whole... kidding. I happen I to, to love your show, and I see your show every day. You know why? Yeah. I'm not working. <laughs> <laughs> I want to tell the whole countryside that Jackie Mason is not as pushy and aggressive and sarcastic as he seems down deep he's worse <laughs> he's worse he's more pushy more well, sarcastic. Well, let me tell you the truth about yeah. the broadway show with all right. jokes aside yes. i happen i want to tell you the truth yes. because i'm not going to wait for you to ask me an intelligent question that's not your field right so i'm going to have i'm going to have to do my own interview i'll right. ask the question and back i'll and tell forth. you my honest opinion back and forth see my honest opinion is that my show which played the 97 previews i still have the the record for the longest period 
of preview period in the history of Broadway. At, 97 at, shows. At the Anta Theater. At the Anta Theater. Big, big theater. Huge theater, and I was right. a tremendous success. And thousands of people from all over the world came to find out what I'm doing at that building. Because they couldn't figure out why a show that wasn't so hot was still working. And we were doing great. And I thought, after I kept fixing it up and the audiences seemed to enjoy it so much and the laughs were so astronomical, I thought that if I opened, I'd be a sensation because I was uh, judging by the audience. People don't realize that critics are not reflective of audience appraisal. A critic sees it from a point of view of an art. Uh, 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 a critic sees it as an art form. True. An audience sees it as a form of entertainment. So when an audience is watching...